Hey, everyone, what's up? I finally got to reading year two, volume 12 of Classroom of the Elite, and it was wild. There was some good things, and there were some questionable things, and I'm going to discuss it all today. But before that, spoiler warning, I'm going to talk all about year two, volume 12. If you haven't read it, go support Kinagasa and go read it. Spoiler warning over. Starting with the good. This scene with Horikita, honestly, I feel this was a really good representation of the themes of this volume, a.k.a. showing how all our characters have changed since the series has started. And a good example of this is Horikita. We really see how far Horikita has come from the beginning of the series. At the beginning of the series, Horikita didn't care about any of her classmates in Class D, thinking that anyone who wasn't academically gifted was dead weight and not worth her time. She wielded her compass as a weapon and only worked with Ayana Kuji because she felt that she had to. But since then, as Ichinos alluded to when she and Horikita battled, Horikita has changed, becoming more accepting of her fellow classmates, proud of their successes and cheering them on, even admitting in her short story that she sees past enemies Abuki and Kushida as friends now. Which is why I classify this scene as a good development for Horikita, with the advice preparing her to become a true leader in her class, the kind of person willing to listen to her fellow classmates, as well as the hug representing how comfortable she has become with Ayana Kuji. Speaking of class leaders, next up let's discuss Ichinose. This book was a roller coaster for her. Ichinose's arc was actually kind of the opposite of Horikita's arc in the series, and in my opinion it's been a good thing. Allow me to explain what I mean. The whole point of the ANHS is to get to Class A. Since day one, each of the four classes had a different type of strategy to achieve that. Class A was all about intellect under Sakanaji doing things aggressively and under Katsuragi doing things defensively. Class C under Ryuin was all about fighting dirty, using violence, intimidation, and fear to win the day. Class D under Horikita and Ayana Kuji was more about thinking through another angle, always coming up with something else the other classes haven't thought of. Meanwhile, Class B under Ichinose was all about friendship and talking things out, seeming almost more pacifist than the other three. As a result, Class B often lagged behind the others in terms of points because Ichinose prioritized saving her classmates more than potential losses. This reflected poorly on her in comparison to other class leaders with the other classes, members of her own class, her own teacher, and even real-life fans of the series seeing her as a somehow lesser leader to her other three counterparts. Over the course of these two years, however, that perception has changed, with Ichinose having become sharper, fiercer, and more confident, and we can see that best in this end-of-year final exam. We see this in the battle between Horikita and Ichinose, where Ichinose wins handily. This proved that Ichinose's strategy of caring more about her friends is quite useful, and honestly, I'd argue that Ichinose is truly on the level of the other four. That being said, this volume wasn't all fun and games for Ichinose. Ayana Kuji really mended in the earlier books when he said he was going to deal with her with his own two hands. The battle between Ayana Kuji and Ichinose was quite devastating. It reminded me of the spread your legs scene with Kei on the boat. Ayana Kuji basically rips off the bandage, telling her that everything that led to a dark period in her time at ANHS, the rumors, her shoplifting past coming to light, everything was facilitated by him. Imagine being Ichinose and learning that the person you looked up to, idolized even, was the creator of all the pain and suffering you went through in the first place. I'd be horrified. In fact, we know from the short stories and previous volumes that Ichinose likes, nay, loves Ayana Kuji a lot, like so much that she spent a whole day taking pics with everyone else just so she could have won with him, likes him so much that even his girlfriend Kay has doubts about her. The first would be to let it break her entirely if Ayana Kuji, one of the few soul people left she truly thought she could trust and be vulnerable with, was lying. Who can was lying to her? Who can she trust? So maybe in this version of events, she kind of falls into more despair, even eventually not wanting to be the leader of her class anymore. The question then would be who would be leader in her stead? I have theories, but I'll save it till the end. In this version of events, perhaps her class is also sad and they never make it to class A, or conversely they follow a new leader and stop caring about unity. And harmony. On the flip side, the second possibility is that she rises from the ashes, taking this knowledge in stride, and even if it might make her sad in the short term, she might use it to grow in the long term. There my only question would be how exactly the transformation would occur. Would she somehow rationalize it, forgive, and somehow even still love Ayana Kuji? Would she feel heartbroken and perhaps turn into a more tough-as-nails leader fueled by scorn and hate? 
Keeping on with our theme of looking at the class leaders, next the battle between Arisu and Ryuen was legendary. They felt like two knights. Personally, I liked how they grew enough to acknowledge each other as opponents. My big question is, as someone who is smooth brain and not at all big brain like Ayanakuji, how exactly did their match end? As far as I can tell, Ryuen metaphorically and should have lost, but Arisu was the one who actually lost? Or to put in the example of a boxing match, it seemed like Arisu was about to TKO Ryuen, but at the last second Ryuen passes, it over Diana Kuji, who just says, no. And then Arisu promptly jumps out the ring and loses. That being said, what will happen next? Based on the last volume, with no protection points, it seems like whoever lost this match would have to leave the school. Does that mean this is over for Class A's Arisu? I don't think so. Basically, the running theory as explained previously by Arisu is that Ayana Kuji is trying to set up a four-way competition by year three, giving everyone a chance to become Class A. Of course, if Arisu is now expelled and Ichinose's class lost, does that mean this four-way battle is impossible? I think not. I think a parallel is being drawn between Ryuin and Arisu, and similarly to how Ryuin was meant to be expelled long ago, but saved at the last second by his classmates, likewise, I believe that Arisu might be saved by her classmates from having to be expelled as a result of the loss to Ryuin in this volume, and we see this in how the message gets passed through Hashimoto and the door towards forgiveness, and even possible friendship with Hashimoto is being opened. Furthermore, I think that the biggest challenge, and something that I've heard a lot of people arguing for, is that eventually Ayana Kuji will leave the current class and join Ichinose's class. With Ayana Kuji, despite their massive point deficit, they have a definite chance to get to Class A. In that way, the four-way battle between the classes can still be maintained. Oh, another point I wanted to bring up before I forget, my Zona was expelled. On one hand, I was sad. I'm always sad when someone is expelled, even if it has to be done. But on the other hand, my Zona was the one leaking info about the class to the other classes, so she kind of had it coming. This was Ayana Kuji's way of patching the leak, while also deterring future people from betraying the class and also driving home to Ichino's just how ruthless he was capable of being. In conclusion, this was a great volume. I really feel like all the characters have been growing and evolving, and I can't wait to see where they go next. Will Ayana Kuji move classes? Will he finally defeat his father? Who would win the four-way battle? Can Ayana Kuji even be defeated? Tune in next book to find out. Please let me know your thoughts about the future of the series, the good, the bad, the sad. I want to hear it all. Anyway, that's all for today. Man, I gotta get some sort of outro.